This is the RVO three phase Independence Day system. This is the uh, master cabinet for phase one. And we also call this the AC cabinet. So we're bringing the AC in from the switchboard here and sending it back to the switchboard there. So this is the in and out to the building. We also have an individual isolator here for each inverter. So this one here is supply and that's return. And here we have a circuit breaker for the uh, relay which runs the cooling fan if we ever need it for these two devices. Over here we've got a 5 kilowatt SP Pro that can peak at 12 kilowatts AC in off-grid mode. And we have our battery supply coming in here from our supercapacitors. Um, they feed back to a central switch over here. We have an individual 250 amp circuit breaker here to isolate the inverter from the DC bus. A USB cable here to go off to the Emacs which is the remote access and remote programming. And these are the new SP Pro comms boards which allow us to link all three SP Pros together and have one SP Pro program the other two. So we don't have to program each one individually so it becomes a real three phase system. Up here we've got a PV isolator for the solar panels so we're bringing our two strings of 500 volts DC in the top. Put them into the two, we have PPT inputs of the charge controller here. This is a uh, 100 amp charge controller. At, it's going to run from 44 to 54 volts onto the super caps. So at 54 volts, 100 amps, it's 5.4 kilowatts. So 2.7 kilowatts per side. We also have an ethernet port on this charge controller and we're just writing some software now to get the energy produced by the charge controllers to update the SP Pros directly, which will avoid the need for these shunts. So we've got a shunt per charge controller here to measure the energy generation from the iMark into the DC bus and we can get rid of that in the future. But for now we need it. Over here we've got our battery voltage sensor. So we've got the um, super caps. We measure the voltage at the terminals of the super cap to overcome the small amount of voltage loss through the wiring. And we send that data off, or that voltage off to all three SP Pros so that they know the voltage of the, the batteries. But I think with the new comms card, we'll only need to feed it to the, the master one and that'll tell the other ones what the voltage is. So if you go to the next cabinet along, so in here, here there's room for two supercapacitors per, per bank and each supercapacitor is 7.1 kilowatt hours. So in this customer's installation we're doing three 7.1 kilowatt hour supercapacitors which is 21.3 kilowatt hours total storage. So this is the second cabinet, L2, so L1, L2, L3. And this one's um, what we call the DC cabinet, so this is the main DC isolator. So our three supercapacitors get fed into this isolator and then they feed out to each of the three inverters. So it's a common switch to isolate storage from inverters. Uh, we've also got another shunt here, another charge controller, isolator, etc. The same as the first cabinet. The third cabinet along, we call it our L3 and also our data cabinet. So we've got PV in again, charge controller, etc. The same as the first two, but additionally we've got an Ethernet switch here and the, the Emacs, which is our own development which allows us to program the SP Pros from anywhere in the world and gather data from them, put it on your app, etc. And so there's an eight port ethernet switch here which can go one uh, Cat5 cable per super cap into here. So there's three, and there's three charge controllers with ethernet, that's six. The Emacs is seven, and the eighth is to go back to the customer's ADSL connection. From the Emacs, we can now read the um, data from the supercapacitor per string of capacitors. So inside this 7.1 kilowatt hour supercapacitor, there's 2,400 3 watt hour supercapa um, supercapacitor cells, and they're in strings. And so we're measuring each string individually in the software, and we know that every string of capacitors is functioning properly. This capacitor can do 1 million charge cycles, and based on charging and discharging this every half an hour, which is possible, um, that would be, say, 24 cycles per day. Um, that would last about maybe uh, over 45 years you'd go 228,000 cycles, which is a quarter of its life. So it would take a really, really long time to wear this out. Uh, the other beautiful thing about supercaps is that they don't get hot when you charge them fast and discharge them fast. So you can charge them as hard as you like or as gently as you like and they just don't waste energy. They're around about, I've tested them to 96% round trip efficiency. Uh, the spec says 99%, but I think that's in uh, a lower charge and discharge rate. So the supercaps, the most amazing thing here, because one of these supercaps here is 7.1 kilowatt hours, and it has enough peaking power to run all three inverters. Now, that, in a lithium-ion battery, you could never do that. You'd wreck the battery, and it would trip. But in this case, we can actually get this thing to surge up to about 40 kilowatts DC output. 
which will feed the three inverters. So basically the whole system can run off one super cap, but we're putting three in because we need more energy storage. And uh, effectively this whole system could run a complete off-grid house, on-grid with uh, grid support. Uh, we can export energy to the grid all day long if we want to, if there's peaking events and make a profit. Or we can import from the grid to uh, make a profit as well using FCAS or any other kind of energy market. So if you want to walk with me over here, Glenn, I'm going to show you one more thing, which is a supercapacitor powered forklift to show you it working. So we put one up on the roof up here of a standard forklift, it's 48 volts. And we run the wiring down here, just down through an isolator here, down through here, under the forklift, plugged into the battery socket inside here. There's nothing special about that, um, but it's a fully functional forklift. And we ran a current clamp on here the other day and we're hitting 460 amps discharge rate, which is 23 kilowatts. So this is a 3.55 kilowatt hour supercapacitor discharging at 23 kilowatts. It's extremely high power, but obviously it's just peaking at that when the motor engages, etc. So that's on a forklift. In a, in a system, it works a lot less than that, um, but as you can see, supercaps really are the future. So that's it for my presentation on uh, the RBO Independence Day system. Thanks very much.